In today's episode. Thank you for your input Karen, or how I did exactly what the HR lady told me to. I expect this parking situation to be solved immediately without additional emails or text messages. Okay, done. It doesn't make it faster for us to be on the phone. So let's get started. Thank you for your input Karen, or how I did exactly what the HR lady told me to. Hello everyone, first I would like to point out that I've created a new Reddit account just so that I could post this story. I didn't want to use my regular account as I would like to stay as anonymous as possible, and my post history plus this story will make that difficult. Second, just so you know, English is not my first language, so please excuse me if there are any mistakes. And lastly, this story happened earlier this year, but the real consequences came last week, that's why I've decided to share it now. The Context I, 35F, live in a big city in Western Europe. After graduating college, I was hired as an office assistant in a big company, let's call it Happy Place. I did my last internship as a student there, and it went so well that I got hired just a few weeks after getting my master's degree. Over the next 10 years I worked my way up from an assistant to office manager to head of one of the biggest departments. I was not paid a lot of money, but it was above average and the benefits were great. But the main reason I stayed for so long was the people who worked there. Over the year I've made quite a few friends there and by the year 2020, I was one of the most experienced people working in Happy Place. My colleagues often came to me for an advice about how to do this or that and I also had a great relationship with the big bosses. And the cherry on top was that I had the best boss someone can hope for. Let's call her Maggie. Maggie was 10 years older than me and she was Wonder Woman. She is nice, professional, cool, helpful, and has a heart of gold. I've worked with her during my whole time at Happy Place and the last four years she was my direct supervisor. I loved her. Then, in 2020 a few things happened almost at the same time, and over the course of six months Happy Place turned into Sad Place. First, the company hired a new HR lady, Karen. She was the worst. She treated everyone below her level of responsibilities, which is pretty much 99% of the staff, as if they were lesser people, talked down to everyone and constantly made changes in the HR policies. She implemented quite a few new rules which lead to us losing some of the benefits that we liked, like free lunches, paid time off to go to the doctor's office during office hours, etc. But the CEO of the company trusted her for some reason and soon he stopped taking meeting with the staff, making Karen the only person who could make decisions regarding the staff. Which meant that Noon could actually complain about her, and we slowly started feeling helpless. Second, Maggie was promoted to a different field, the one she actually wanted to work in, so I cannot be mad at her for leaving and she got replaced by Susan as my new supervisor. Susan was cool but she was my age and with less experience, which did not make much sense. So even though on paper she was the one in charge, I was the one constantly explaining to her how things worked and what needed to be done, while she took the credit. And lastly, COVID. Our line of work was highly impacted by the pandemic so the whole year 2020 I was working under an enormous amount of stress, taking almost no vacation time, doing my job and some of Susan's job, as at some point she went on a medical leave, and some of my co-workers' jobs, as some colleagues cracked under the tension and quit, but no one got hired to replace them. But despite all of the hard work, I did not receive any pandemic-related bonus, which was weird since some of my co-workers let it slip that they got a 1,000 euros bonus for achievements during the pandemic. The Compliance So given all the events of 2020, in January 2021 I've decided that enough was enough. When it was time for my annual review, I've decided that I would negotiate better conditions for myself, because as much as I loved my job and the people I've worked for, I couldn't keep working so much for so little pay. As Susan was still on a medical leave, Karen was the one who did my annual review, despite the fact that I've only met her a few times and we've never directly worked together. In preparation for the meeting, I've made a list of the things I've been putting up with and a list of reasons why I should get a slight pay bump. I was asking for a 15% pay increase, but was happy to accept a 10%. It was not about the money. 
It was about knowing that there was at least a chance that management valued me as an employee, and that I was not just some s asterisk cur who did so much for not even a thank you. After making my case to Karen and carefully explaining to her what my job was and what I was actually doing, I asked her the dreaded question. She looked at me, smiled and said OP, I appreciate everything you've been doing for the company, and we value you as an employee. But your responsibilities and your abilities are not worth that much. I was speechless. I admit, I was so angry and hurt that I felt tears coming up to my eyes. But I took a deep breath, calmed myself and said thank you for your input, Karen. But I cannot keep working in these conditions, it's not worth it. Karen rolled her eyes and replied then you can quit, but I will be sorry to see you go. And quit I did. You see, there were two things Karen did not know. First, as explained, I was a highly valued employee with a great reputation and over 10 years of experience in the field. In our field reputation is important and for the last two years I've been receiving job offers from competitors. I always refused because I loved working for Happy Place. But since the events of 2020, I started taking interviews, checking what else was out there. And just before my meeting with Karen, I did an interview with Cool Company, who offered me a 60% raise to do the same job as I did for Happy Place. Second, remember how I said I took almost no vacation days in 2020. So by January of 2021 I had over two months of paid leave available. I checked with the HR, not Karen, the week before my annual review, and they confirmed to me in writing that I was free to take my vacation days whenever I wanted. So, I did exactly what Karen told me to do. I quit. I put in my two months notice and took my two months vacation. Which meant that I came to work for only one day, to clean out my office and say goodbye, before leaving for good. I felt bad because I left so many of my colleagues in a really bad position, since they now had to do my job. But they all assured me that they understood and that they would have done the same thing. After my two months paid vacation I started working at Cool Company and I've been here ever since. The Aftermath I kept in touch with a few friends from Happy Place and they regularly informed me of what was going on over there. It seems that me quitting was the push that many of my co-workers needed to also make the final leap and quit. As I said, the conditions went from great to bad since Karen took office. Also, the fact that I quit so abruptly got the attention of the CEO as we had a good relationship. He asked Maggie, who was aware of the whole story with Karen, about it, and she told him the truth. About me not getting the COVID bonus, about Karen speaking down to staff members, about her telling me to quit if I wanted to. The CEO finally opened his eyes and launched an investigation into Karen's actions. He personally did interviews with some staff members and heard stories about her from people from many different departments. He also investigated the COVID bonus story and it turns out, she only gave the COVID bonus to her friends from different departments and a very generous one to herself. Plus since I've quit no one was actually able to do my job and the fact that Karen was responsible for me leaving, made her responsible for the consequences. So after reviewing everything, the CEO decided to terminate Karen's contract. Rumor has it the whole staff of Happy Place celebrated this joyous occasion. The Cherry on Top Last week, my boss at Cool Company walked into my office and said OP, you know Jen from HR is retiring soon, right? We did interviews to replace her, and one of the candidates is Karen. She seems competent but asks for quite a lot of money. You and her work together, right? What's she like? Do you think she deserves to be paid more than we initially offered? I said boss, you have a few minutes? Great. Let me tell you a story. After hearing my very honest opinion of Karen, boss man laughed and said okay good to know. I think we will tell her that she is not the right fit for us. Thanks OP. As soon as boss man left my office, I sent an email to my friend Lori from HR who was in charge of replying to candidates. I also told her the story and asked her to keep me informed if there is any development with the whole Karen applies to cool company thing. A few hours later I got an email from Lori. Turns out, she copied me to her official reply to Karen. It read Dear Karen, thank you for your interest in working for cool company. 
After careful consideration we regret to inform you that in our opinion, your responsibilities and your abilities are not worth that much. I brought Lori a big chocolate cookie the next day. Thank you all for reading. Have a great day and remember, don't let Karens ruin your sense of self-worth. I expect this parking situation to be solved immediately without additional emails or text messages. Okay, done. I am a building manager and I took over two residential apartment blocks. Part of my duties include assigning parking spots. Due to the incompetence and neglect of the previous management company, I inherited a parking lot which was a complete organizational disaster multiple tenants believing they had been assigned the same spot, tenants parking in spots, but not paying, etc. And of course the parking map which is supposed to be regularly updated, had not seen an update in almost 16 months. A situation arose where two tenants were fighting over the same parking spot. Instead of coming to management to resolve, they engaged in a nasty gram war which consisted of them leaving mean notes on each other's car. Eventually this dispute spilled over, and I was contacted by one of them. The conversation was simple but plain, I expressed understanding about their frustration, and asked specific questions to help figure out who was originally assigned that parking spot. I explained how previous management failed to maintain order in the parking map, and that I would cheerfully resolve the issue. Instead of replying to my simple questions, when were you assigned the spot? When did you sign your lease? They sent me an all caps email which in part read, I do not have to answer any questions and I expect this parking situation to be resolved immediately with no more emails or text messages. Well, if they had just answered my questions, I could have resolved the situation. I suspected they were the original tenant assigned the spot and it was indeed theirs. But since they would not answer questions and insisted on resolution immediately, I did what I could. I assigned the other tenant that spot, and I replied in order to resolve the issue without communication, you are now assigned spot number 64. If you continue to park in spot 35 you will be towed immediately, as it is now assigned to a different tenant. I gave them the spot right next to the dumpsters, now they can enjoy the stench of rotting garbage and a cloud of wasps every trip to the car, which is also 100m further away from the doors. Two days later they approached me in person and apologized for their behavior. I said no worries, I don't hold grudges. They asked if I could reassign them their old spot. No. It doesn't make it faster for us to be on the phone. I work on an IT help desk, it is what you think it is. One of the things we support is mobile phones, however the company my company supports, and the one I'm on the desk for, has supplied us and the user with handy dandy guides on how to do pretty much everything that's needed on mobile phones. It's really airtight and I love directing people to the guide because it has a video and steps on how to do things. They can find it on the intranet in the IT section. However, since the average caller never reads the guides, we often get callers who think that we can magically do things over the phone to fix it. These are people who get up, get dressed, tie their shoelaces and completely forget how to do anything but breathe when they get on the phone to us. You think that's hyperbole but I've been asked which finger they need to use to tap the phone. One such user logged a ticket and demanded a call back from an expert. He was given the user guide link and oh boy, did not like that. He called and got through to me, and I explained that we have the exact same guide, and that I would only be reading it out to him over the phone as he read on his end. Naturally, he didn't listen to a word I said and demanded I help him because he doesn't have time for the guide and he'd rather speak to a tech person to sort it out. QMC, I spent an hour and 20 minutes on the phone, slowly going through the guide word for word and making sure he'd follow every step, I even got it on his laptop screen that I can access. He asked several times if we were almost done, to which I reiterated you can come back to this at your leisure, using the guide on the intranet. Mobile phones are not managed in the same way as computers, we can't remote access it and fix things. He had meetings, lunch, all sorts of things lined up that got shifted out of whack on his calendar and every message he received on his laptop that he answered, I made sure to go back a couple steps just to confirm what we'd done so far. He wanted to speak to an expert, so I just made the guide speak through me. Thanks for watching.